Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Jal Test Video Logs. What we're doing here today is that we're going to go over the main functionalities, uh, pretty much the buttons that you're going to go through on your diagnostics procedure. So we jump onto our main screen, what we see here, and we're going to see that we're on the automatic mode. Automatic mode allows us to do a full vehicle system scan. That means that based on the connector and the color that we have on our vehicle, we're going to select one or the other one. So this is going to be EPA or GHD 17, that means 2017 or newer. This is going to be 6.9 pins, older, Volvo or Mac, and the light medium duty. All of these, when you click on them, it's going to give you an option of system scan or scan plus read fault codes. We're going to select the latter, and that is because the system will identify everything that's on the vehicle, and then it's going to show you all the codes that are present. That's going to allow us to do what is called the triage option. So as we see here, it's starting to identify the systems that are present, and then it shows, and it'll give you the specific fault codes for each one of them. If this is something that we're doing in a rush and we need to figure out what's going on with the vehicle, how to diagnose it and get it back up and running, then the option is going to be straight troubleshooting the codes without connecting to a system. Now that's an option that is provided by the software. And then if not, once it finishes, what we're capable of doing is going in one by one and connecting. All right. Now, all of these features are done on a normal vehicle within 60 seconds. If it takes a little bit longer, it might be because of the PC or the or the speed on your on your computer, right? So this is what it's going to look like initially. All the systems that are there, it's going to be able to scroll down because in your vehicles they have a lot of systems present, and then it's going to show us if there's active codes, the amount of codes, and then the communication protocol. What we see on our left are going to be our shortcuts, so these are always going to be available, and then here are going to be the main buttons on how to navigate around that. Now it's important you guys always remember that there's going to be search options, and we can use those to our advantage. There's actually going to be another vlog um, specific search actions. So what we're going to do is select our system, as I was saying, and we go from the general. So on top here we see this like a Windows browser, it tells us a VIN number, and then the vehicle information. And then once we select our system, there's going to show up our connect option. We click on the connect and now we're going from the generic vehicle of all systems present to the specific. Now where it tells us we're in the Detroit DDAC 16, DD13 MCM 2.1 and so on. All right. So the focus of this vlog is going to be the read file codes. So we're just going to select the read file codes and show us how we approach this, this structure. All right. Now it's pretty much seamless. You go from left to right. If there's a little symbol, we go to the bottom and see what it says. So if it's red, it's an active fault code, non-active, or others. Then it's going to give you a code, SPN411, FMI3. For most of us, it doesn't really mean much. But for the manufacturer, that's the proprietary data. So the SPN gives you a region, the FMI, the specific. So that's uh, narrowing down the code to the, to the detail. Then you have the amount of repetitions. And then here you see that there is another icon. So it tells you if it's a very priority or if it's just a code without extreme priority. All right. After that, it's going to tell us a description, differential pressure sensor, high signal. So right here, we're going to make a pause. And this is where we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the tools. So up to here, pretty much everybody does that. They give you a code, status, description. And pretty much the next step is go figure it out on your own. And we've noticed that that's an issue and we need more information and more details in order to better repair. So the first thing that you're going to run into is freeze frame data. Freeze frame data also has a search option and it will allow you to identify the priority from 1 to 4, then date and time of last occurrence. And this can go up to 120 measurements that are stored, and that depends on the component, how much information can it store, okay? Um, the advantage of it is that if you go with the driver, figure out where they were, what they were doing, you have a when and a what. So you can identify what they were doing when that caused, and in some cases you'll see the throttle position or the, the load, things like that, that'll help you understand what was going on. Our second element, will be the help and components about the fault. And I think this is one of the most powerful ones because this is where we link this code that nobody understands with the direct effect, the power loss. And then after that, it gives you the actual component. This could be one or it can be six, but the components that are related to that fault. In this case, we see that it's a differential pressure sensor, EGR, okay? Now, most of us, when we work on all makes, all models, we don't know exactly what every component is. so. It's sometimes difficult to figure out what it is. So we've added this button, search, see information about the component. What does this do? First thing it does is shows us an image. Now this image can be CAD design like in this one, or it can be an actual truck image. Majority are pictures from vehicles. So that's gonna be an advantage to identify what we're looking for. 
we continue to scroll down and then it's a small piece and a pretty big engine so this red dot up here is going to show us what we're looking for where it's at okay shows us the whole image now obviously it's a very pretty image most of our trucks are going to be full of grease but hey it helps us out and then we'll continue to go down these are the key points what are our operating values under normal conditions so we know that this component goes at 0.55 to 0.85 that's our operating range and voltages here we have the pins and how they're set up one two and three the torques and then you can even hyperlink to the component replacement guides and that's going to tell us how to take the component apart how to clean it how to swap it if it's necessary how to calibrate it and how to let it go and be ready to go we're going to be able to see this in our info online vlog because these are one of the elements and added values of the info online so once we finish with this part we know what component we have we know what it looks like where it's at and what ranges it goes so let's figure out how all of that is related between each other so we're going to link into the wiring diagrams which will show you all the components that are on the vehicle now the advantage of the wiring diagrams is that they're consistent across the board so the component that we're looking for is automatically highlighted we don't have to go anywhere when we hover over it it's going to show us an image so if we go to another one there we have an actual image as i was saying before and this will be across the board now we saw the details of the pins one two and three and how those link to the ecm so here we hover we see the ecm we see that our key component is going to be our power, our ground, or our data line. So pin 3 to pin 109, that's our data communication. So if there's an issue with communication, we're going to double click and we're going to see that ECM. Now one of the most difficult things about the ECM is figuring out how the pins go. Because these go, for example, up, down, and then to the right. These go from left to right and then down, and always left to right as well. So when we're looking for pin 109, the fact that here we know that's 91, there's probably 100, 109. We've narrowed down our problem to there's something going on with the vehicle, to there's something going on with the engine, to it's this component, to it's this pin on the ECM or this pin on the component. So right now, all we need to do is check. ECM, check the wiring and check that pin on the on the sensor and we'd be ready to go. We've narrowed this down in about four minutes in real time, right? As you see, same layout, pictures, locations, and so on. Now there's an advantage here that you can press on show component list or expand this element right here. And this will allow you to search. So if we're gonna look for something related to the oil filter or oil separator. Here we go, click on that one. It'll take us to where it's at and it'll show us the component oil pressure sensor that's going to be down here and we're going to be able to navigate because we have here three pages where we can go forward and back but by clicking on the actual element it will take us to where we want to go and make our lives easier right. so finishing off with the wiring diagram the last step that we're going to show you is also part of the info online and this is the fault code troubleshooting fault code troubleshooting is pretty much a step-by-step -step procedure on how to go about repairing the fault what well, we're all accustomed to seeing which are the trouble trees so we're going to increase the size there and then we can expand all the codes so this is going to be across the board the logic on it and we can also show check marks on the procedure so let's say first one check the EGR differential pressure sensor we've already done that with the previous procedure so we say okay there check the circuit so it's going to tell you what elements to make sure for that working once we're there minimize we're done here check the wiring and connections it'll show us resistance values continuities and so on control unit and the last step is going to be countdown in the case that you need to reset in this case a reset is one minute and then you're always going to finish with the clear fault codes so once you're done with the whole procedure you put clear fault codes and that should rescan the system and the code disappears all right so pretty much this is how we go about repairing um or reading and approaching the fault codes we go into the screen where it tells us the status the actual code then we have the priority level a description and then the key like the bread and butter of the gel test uh, information and freeze frame data, component information, location, pictures, and where it's at uh, associated to a wiring diagram. And then we finish up with what we call the, the troubleshooting trees. So with this, we would be ready, having diagnosed all our codes and ready to go to the next section. So thank you for joining us for this vlog and be sure to tune in on our website, our YouTube channel, and all the good stuff that we're bringing out to train and be a little bit more proficient in the use of the DAL test. Thank you and see you next time around.